Pre-Calculus Chapter 1, Lesson 1.7, Combinations of Functions and Composite Functions. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about how to take multiple functions and combine them, either using operations or using composition. First off, though, we need to make sure that we can find the domain of a function. Remember, do the domain of a function is all x values that exist for that particular function. If you think about a linear function or a quadratic, we have talked about before about how the domain of those functions are going to be able to cover the entire x-axis, in this case, so the domain will be all real numbers. The two examples that we need to worry about, though, are when we have fractions or even roots. You can never divide by zero, and so that means here when we're trying to find the domain of the fraction that we can never have the value of zero in the denominator. To restrict the domain of a fraction, we're going to set the denominator equal to zero and then solve. Whatever the solution to that equation is will be what we call the excluded values or the restricted values, and these will be excluded from the domain. Also remember, we cannot have the square root of a take the square root of a negative number. To restrict the domain for an even root, we're going to set the expression under the radical if it's greater than or equal to zero, and then solve for x. From here, then, this will be your restricted domain. For example, when we're trying to find the domain of this function right here, f of x over x squared minus 49, we will note here that this is a fraction, and so we need to find the excluded values that will make the denominator 0. We will do this by setting the denominator equal to 0. And so if we do that, we get x squared minus 49, so we're going to add 49 to the other side. And then to undo the square, we can square root both sides, which will give us a 7. But remember, when we take the square root, we have to take both the positive and negative root. And so, in this case, positive 7 and negative 7 are the excluded values, or also we can call the restricted values. So we can write the domain of this function as all real numbers except x cannot be 7 or negative 7. Another way of writing that would be an interval notation, which would be from negative infinity to negative 7, union negative 7 to positive 7, union 7 to positive infinity. These unions, and with the, along with the parentheses, mean that we skip over the actual values of negative 7 and 7 as we move across the number line. Our next examples here are going to be talking about all the different types of functions and finding the, those domains. For example, in this first one here, we note that this is a linear function since the x is only to the first power. And so we talked about before in the last lesson that the domain of any linear function is always going to be all real numbers. In our next example, this is a, a great rational here, or in this case a fraction. So we need to find those excluded values by setting the denominator equal to zero. We're going to be doing this by using our, our cross method, which since we have a trinomial with an a value greater than one. So this means our a times c here will be negative 12, and the b here will be negative 11. So we need to find two numbers that will multiply to negative 12 that add to negative 11. If we think and take a moment and think about that, we'll find that the two numbers that we're looking for here are going to be negative 12 and a positive 1. And so we can go ahead and branch out the negative 11x and replace it with our two values that we found. Now that we have our four terms, we can go ahead and use grouping. In the first two terms, we notice that we can take a 2x out, and that will leave us with an x minus 6. In the second two, all we can do is take out a positive 1, leaving us also with an x minus 6. So our two factors here are going to be 2x plus 1 and x minus 6. To find the excluded values, we're going to have to set each of those factors equal to 0. And this here will give us an excluded value of positive 6. And if we set the other factor equal to 0, another excluded value of negative 1 half by subtracting over the 1 and dividing by 2. Thus our domain here will be all real numbers except the excluded values of 6 and negative 1 half. We can also write this in interval notation using negative infinity to the negative 1 half, union negative 1 half to 6, 
And then finally, skipping number six, going from six to infinity. Notice all the parentheses. Our next one here, we notice that the highest degree in this case is going to be two. So this is a quadratic. We can rewrite this as negative x squared plus three if you need to see it in our standard form. So if you think about our transformations, we have a negative, negative a, which is going to flip it over the x-axis, and then also a plus three, which is going to move it up. Either of these transformations, though, are not going to affect our domain, and so we get the domain here to be all real numbers. Our next three examples all are involve roots. And so if we remember that our radical graph is only usually has a domain of zero to infinity. So we're gonna to have to use our transformations, knowledge of transformations to help us out here when finding the domain of these. To find the restricted domain, we're gonna take what's inside the radicand and go ahead and set equal to zero. If we do that, we get that x equal to negative five is where we're starting to get negative values. So this means here that our domain was going to be going from negative five to infinity. Because so if we think about that plus five as a transformation, that means our graph is going to shift left five from zero and it still extend all the way to the right. And so since we can still exist at negative five, we can go ahead and put a bracket on the negative five there and continue going all the way to the right. Our next example, we're going to do something very similar to it and set that inside equal to zero. And so if we do that, we're going to get out by subtracting another 7 and then dividing by negative 8, 7 eighths. But if we think about this here, that our domain, we like before, we would put 7 eighths to infinity. But we have to think about transformations in this case. Actually, if we do this again and think about our transformations, we'll note here that even though we get that 7 eighths out, well, since there's a negative on the, in, on the x term, that's actually going to flip it over the y-axis, making our graph go out to the left. And so, in this case, our domain, since it's being flipped over the y-axis, is going to go from that negative infinity up into that value of 7 eighths. And so we have a bracket on the 7 eighths, all going all the way to the left, in this case, to negative infinity. This last example has both a square root and the radical. So we're going to take care of the radical first. We're going to do that by setting the inside equal to negative 3, or sorry, x minus 3 equal to 0, which is going to give us a value of 3. And so for the numerator, we know the domain of that is going to be from bracket 3 to infinity, since there is no y-axis reflection. But if we take into account the denominator and find its restricted value, we can set that equal to 0, and we're going to get out a positive 10. So this means here that since 10 is in that range between 3 and infinity, that but we can't be 10, we need to go ahead and split this up using our interval notation. So our final domain of this function means that we will have going from 3 to 10, can exist at 10, but we can skip over it and continue on to infinity. So we can use those union signs to put together our two different intervals. Now let's consider doing operations with two functions. Suppose we have two functions f and g. If the, we take those two functions, then we can actually go ahead and find the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of those two functions. Furthermore, we can actually go ahead and find the domains of those functions as well, of the new functions, because it'll just be a combination of the domains of the two original functions. For the sum, f plus g of x, all we have to do is add the two functions together, combining like terms. Same thing with the difference. If we want to find f minus g of x, we're going to take the first function, subtract the second. For the product, we can multiply the two functions together. And for the quotient, f divided by g of x, we're going to take the first function divided by the second function, g of x, provided that that second function does not equal zero. So for example, if we consider the two functions f of x equal to x minus 5 and g of x equal to x squared minus 1. And let's go ahead and find each of the following. So in a here, we want to go ahead and find f plus g of x. I'm going to go ahead and, go ahead and split this apart into f of x plus g of x. So that way we can know that we can what's going to go in each spot. 
So we can go ahead and substitute in x minus 5 for f of x and x squared minus 1 for g of x. From here then, all we need to do is combine like terms. So if we do that, we get x squared, then our x term, and then we can combine the negative 5 and the negative 1 to get negative 6. If we notice, this is a quadratic function, and so this is going to be a, a domain of all real numbers. If we look at our original functions, we'll notice that f of x is linear and g of x is also quadratic. So both the original domains of the original functions are also going to be all real numbers. If we go ahead and go to our next example, and we do find, want to find the difference. I'm going to go ahead again, break this apart into f of x minus g of x. And from there, we can go ahead and substitute in our two equations. So in this case, we're going to get x minus 5 minus x squared minus 1. Notice in this case, since it is subtraction, you're going to go ahead, go ahead and have to distribute or keep in mind that as a negative sign. So it's going to give us a negative x squared plus x, and then negative 5 minus a negative 1 means we're actually adding 1, making this a negative 4. Again, this is just a quadratic, so the domain is still going to be all real numbers. If we go to our product, this means that we're going to have f of x times g of x, breaking those apart. And so if we substitute in, this is the same thing as saying x minus 5 times x squared minus 1. So really, we are going to have to FOIL here by taking x times x squared and x times negative 1, and negative 5 times x squared and negative 5 times a negative 1. This right here will give us x cubed minus x minus 5x squared plus 5. And so if we were to write this in standard form, we would get x cubed, oops, oh, I made a little mistake there, minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. Since this is a cubic, since the degree is 3, that is our S shape curve, which is still going to have a domain of all real numbers. Finally, for our quotient, this is the same thing as taking the f of x divided by g of x, since g of x is not 0. So this means we get x minus 5 over x squared minus 1. We can note here that we are not going to be able to actually simplify this at all, so this is actually our final answer. But the one little catch here that we have to pay attention to, since this is a quotient and we cannot have 0 in that denominator, our domain is not going to be all real numbers. So we need to go ahead and find those excluded or restricted values by setting the denominator equal to 0. So if we do that, we're going to get x squared minus 1, add over the 1, and we can square root, giving us the values of plus 1 and negative 1 for the excluded values. Thus, our domain for the quotient of these two functions is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to a positive 1, union 1 to infinity. Another way of saying all real numbers except the values positive and negative 1.